Hello, this is Kane, and as I promised, we're gonna take a more in-depth look at the RSI Galaxy, which is, the more I look at it, the more excited this ship is making me. Like, all the ships that have been released in recent times, this is one of the strongest ships out there, and it is without question the best ship in the RSI lineup. Like, it's not even close. There is nothing in the RSI lineup that gets even close to it, and I argue there's not a ship out there in its category that gets close to it. It's that good. It's really, really an exciting ship. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Of course, first one, just look at the design. Like It is classic RSI, so very much this angular wedge shape uh, style of ship. I do think it is inherently through this design it is not the most efficient when it comes to interior space but it's most definitely not the worst offender in that regard anyway the major possible downsides that you're going to have of course is you're going to have uh, rather poor bridge visibility and i really hope that they start to think about landing so that we can get proper um, in instrumental landing systems so that I can land a ship without being able to see what I'm going but by just looking at my instruments, which right now we don't really have. The only semi-decent example is the docking system, but even that is not the most intuitive uh, system to work with. But something like that is most definitely needed when you look at ships of this category. But beyond that, yeah, it looks great. It's a really, really cool design ship. Lots of detail going on within it. Um, like there are bits in here, of course, which are obviously there just for a styling cue reason, but it works. I mean, that is a very traditional science fiction-esque styling, and there's nothing bad with that. So, one ship countless adventures. Well, I'll just let's read what they say here. Many vehicles take claim to the versatility, and lots of them can indeed handle multiple roles. But... Through the galaxy, RSI is redefining the depth of the ability of a multi-role ship is capable of. Your galaxy can be a long-haul freighter, a mobile hospital, or an all-in-one refinery, depending on which prospect module you outfit it with. The galaxy's next generation chassis is built around a configurable midship space that supports interchangeable modules, empowering you and your crew to take on a wide variety of professional roles, with a four-deck command center and a after-deck that serves as a dedicated hangar or a sizable cargo hold. And additional specialized model uh, and additional specialized models are in the works. Whatever advantage you may choose, the galaxy provides. And yes, it does provide indeed. So currently, of course, it comes in with three options. We have cargo, map bay, and refinery. And of course, others are bound to be there, as they promised, and that is really appealing. Let's look at the cargo. So we have a good knife view of it here. The cargo module is based around the main cargo large container that we see here. These are 32 SCU containers. So if you don't know, that is a container size install citizen. For example, a raft carries three of these uh, below it. And the Galax here will carry a total of 16 of these containers here internally in the bay. So whereas they are locked here on the side. However, I think as you can see here, if you wanted to be creative, you can fit more in the more containers in here potentially at least safely probably three here on the middle uh, loading area but of course you know they're not going to be secured so there's going to be risk attached to that but standard capacity 16 of the main cargo containers so 32 su each brings us to a total of 512 which is a really healthy cargo capacity with that i think it beats out the Carrick, um, the beats out the Caterpillar, the C2 however still beats this one, but componentry wise I think the Galax has a nicer offering. Alternatively we can do a map bay. Uh, this map bay module is the most interesting I think. It comes with all of the bats. 3 tier 3s, 2 tier 2s, 1 tier 1. The best all around layout. It can bring in passengers clearly here from a lift from the ground. And of course you have the hangar bay in the back, which is ideally suited for something like a C8R Pisces. So that's your ambulance. And this module is why already it is such an interesting ship. Because 
the Galax really works from a crew size of just I'm running this Galax with my crew to I'm part of the largest organization. And depending on where you are, you're going to be using likely different modules that are still going to be of high value. Like the very large organization probably doesn't need you to haul cargo around. They have dedicated ships for that, probably will do the job better and cheaper. However, a mobile hospital is always going to be of use. Whether you're doing some dangerous industrial work or of course combat operations, uh, your medical capacities, having those on hand is going to be a really, really big advantage to have. So I really like that. And that's why I think this module is very, very interesting. Then we have finally the refinery module. This one is gonna be very interesting for a small to maybe mid-level organization. Being able to take the bags from a prospector or a mall and refine them on the spot is going to get you quite an additional efficiency to your mining operation. Because you can keep your mining ships on station so they don't need to move back and forth. And then your cargo, you can just load that on board a dedicated cargo ship that flies back and forth while as this ship will just linger around in space and be there. I mean, at two days, for example, a Vulcan for some refueling operations, and you can stay on station and keep your mining activities going for a very long time. And this is really important. I can show you in EVE Online, where of course we did a lot of mining uh, just to build everything because you needed to mine the materials to build stuff. We had the mining ships on station. The mining ships are not going to be flying back and forth to station because that's a waste of their capabilities. You want them to be doing the mining. So whenever they were just their cargo holds were full, they would dump it into another ship. Later on, that was earlier on, we would just dump the cargo container in space and then somebody would pick it up. It was a little bit more risky, but it was still doable. And even nowadays, you still do it and you just use tractor beams to pull them to the main ship. It collects all of the cargo. Uh, some of them can even compress it so they don't do refining there. And then a cargo ship comes to there, loads it into the cargo hold and then flies it to a station where it can get be refined. And this is why you have the additional degrees of specializations when you're looking at an organizational level of operations because you want ships to do specific roles uh, primarily. Are we going to see ships that can do this even more efficiently? Probably we of course have the uh, MISC offering as well as a refinery ship, but I'm not really sure how that works with the cargo capacity because the cool thing that we see here, of course, we have these two refiners and we have cargo capacity with this thing, even a small hangar bay. So we can put the cargo in that hangar and then somebody can come out there with a tractor beam ship and just drag it on board their own ship and then can fly it off and do the uh, cargo runs. So in that respect, I think it's gonna be really interesting. Of course, we have them here the bit of the layout. So, staggering 512 SU, as we said. Lift, of course, downstairs. So, we have a crane here with um, tractor beams, as we saw, for the loading and unloading of the cargo. And we have hangar access still, of course, there. And the hangar, of course, in this case, can also still be used for some cargo capacity. I believe that was a 64 SU cargo capacity in the hangar if you're going to use it for that. So that's still a very useful option and that primarily stores them the smaller uh, one SCU cargo boxes, of course. Because that's the cool thing about this, that they really are focused on these big container options. I'm not sure if that means that this is unable to use, uh, to you know load one SCU cargo boxes in here. If that is the case, that may limit the ship in some aspects, but we'll have to wait and see. And the med bay is set, we have the beds for each of the categories. That's what makes it so strong. I think only the um, Endeavour, probably with a medical module, can be even large. It's of course a much larger ship and even more capable than this. But there is no ship um, smaller than this that has this level of capability. Because the Apollo series needs to make a choice. They cannot have all three beds at the same time. So they're going to be running a selection of one or two types of beds and dealing with it accordingly. Here you have all three of them which makes it a really flexible mobile hospital. Then you have the ability to load, of course, at Pisces, uh, 8R in for your, pa for your patients, so you probably keep this thing in space in orbit, not, not land it on the ground. And you just have a all capable mobile hospital. So, you know, your friends, your other players, you can go in, out, in, out, you know, whenever you get an injury, you can keep going. And that's it again, you know, the goal here is to try and stay on station.
if you're getting taken out of action because of injuries, that costs you money. And from a pure gameplay perspective, it is also not fun. So a ship like this, really, really going to have a lot of value for organizations. Small, medium, large, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to have a very good use for this. And the refinery, as we said here, we have uh, loading here. So we extract them from the bags, put them into the processors. And then, of course, we can load them into the hangar bay over there. And then somebody else can take them out of there. And we just stay there along with our mining ships. And we'll boss, oh, here we are. We just keep on refining and refining and pushing it through. But you've got to keep in mind, like, when it comes down to the mining, right now, we're just messing around with this and stuff. But at the end, it's going to be a production line. You're going to be sitting there mining rock after rock after rock for hours and hours on end. That's what you're going to be doing when you're doing mining. So you be aware of that and hope that you find it fun. And the same, of course, comes when you need to be a refiner. But the nice thing is here, this being a module, and it's a really capable module, you can do something else as well once you're done with the mining. You're like, eh, I'm done with the mining, kick out the refinery module, I load my cargo module. I'm just going to do a little bit of training or maybe later on one of the things that i talk about in my ie video why would i not put a whole bunch of torpedoes in here with a launcher that goes down the middle suddenly my galax has become a very very strong competitor against my polaris because i can fit a lot of torpedoes in here i wage a lot of torpedoes even if they're like a size nines, well, you could be fitting in so many size nine torpedoes in here. It is absolutely ridiculous. So it can become a very powerful combatant as well in that regard. And that's why I like this style of modular ship. It is just literally, okay, we have a ship, which is really good, really good componentry. We'll take a look at it later. And we can just put in a large section that does the main business end of the ship. We can change it out in a way that really makes it a almost at the level of a dedicated ship. And that's when multi-role ships remain interesting. Because my main problem with a lot of the multi-role ships is that the moment you start to look at them from an organization perspective, they lose out a lot of value. Because from an organization perspective, you want to have dedicated ships that do their job the best because you are looking at efficiency you do not want to have ships that do a mediocre job if i want you to do a miner i want you to do fly around in the dedicated best mining ship that i can find for you to do that job because that means you'll make the most money we'll make the most money everybody's going to be out better if you show up with a ship that can do some mining some there and then this is like yeah well um Mike, you got a second mining ship. Okay, you borrow his mining ship then because you don't want it. It is inefficient and efficiency is always key. And if you're new to MMOs, welcome. As MMO players, we optimize the living hell out of everything we do in these games. So be very much prepared for that to happen. People will go and fine tune it to the hundreds or thousands of percentile points because that's what we do, that's where there's a lot of fun in there, and that's how you're gonna be running these things. So having then a ship like this, it may not be like 100%, but a ship like this can probably get close to a 90 or slightly over 90% compared to a full on dedicated ship. And that is really, really close, and that makes it really fun to have around. Let's take a look at the base feature. So here we have the command deck, and I love it. It looks amazing. Like, it really does look amazing. Now up here, here we have our, um, I assume it's gonna be Captain Bill's flight control up here. I don't know, I would, another dedicated station. We have, of course, three turrets. I'm not sure if they are meant or remote. We'll have to take a look there. But we have four stations here on this command deck. It looks really, really cool. Like, it, it, it feels like it is a much larger ship than it actually is. And I think that helps sell it as well so yeah i like this command deck i like these consoles they're thick and sturdy uh the only thing i do think they will probably need to work at is just giving them more screen real estate because here we can see we have multiple screens here we only have one and it's like 
there is space here. If there is space, put a freaking screen there, <laughs> like really. There's no such thing as having too much information access easily available. Like I currently run a turbo monitor setup with of course an ultra wide in the center here. And you're still like, hmm, I need more screen space. Like whenever you increase your screen space, you always want more of it, but you always get a good level of value out of it. Of course there are diminishing returns, but a single screen is always kind of inferior. Let's see what it says here, command, habitation, yada, 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 we don't care about that. Now here, of course, we have the hangar, so here we have an Arco and PGV in here. And probably most people go and run a Pisces, or maybe even two. I think if you park them well enough, you may be able to get side by side two Pisces in here. The main limitation, as you can see here from this picture, is probably going to be the length of the hangar. That is going to be restricting a lot of the ships you can park in here. But like, if you're gonna be like, oh, I want to park fighters in here and stuff like that, then you don't understand the purpose of this ship, sorry. Here, you are looking purely at, I want to have a utility ship parked in here. That is what you're gonna be uh, looking at. Weapon systems. So, tactically positioned manual turret. So, they are manual turrets, but they don't say if they're in mode. So I think that the looks of this, they look like there are pathways to them. So, I assume these are manned turrets. The cool thing about these turrets is that actually two Psi-5 weapons. That is substantial and uh, much more than I honestly expected for this ship. Like I was expecting uh, to see a pair of Psi-3s or maybe Psi-4s on here. But coming in at full Psi-5s, that actually gives it a reasonable punch. Now of course here we have like this action shot in here, but like in the end, understand, these are primarily a self-defense weapon system. As it stands right now, it's not a combat ship. If they want to make a full combat ship, I think you're gonna be looking at a, uh, like I said, a torpedo module in there. So you're looking at a bomber, and then again, your guns are still a self-defense uh, solution. So it will most definitely be able to take on, uh, like if somebody shows up with a Drake Corsair or something, then you have a very good amount of firepower to deal with them. They are a little bit vulnerable, of course, if you look at a uh, rear end angle, it doesn't really cover that very well. So that is again a sign that this is not a full or dedicated combat ship. Now I have full on gallery. Let's see if we can enough pause that I'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's just first take a look at the specs. So these are the specifications that they released of course knowing cig how reliable they are it is yeah your guess is as good as mine raw multi-crew crew six so i think the crew counts probably going to depend also a little bit on what you're going to be doing like if you're running cargo operations like as long as you have a pilot and enough people to man the gun so probably four people you can get away with it maybe five to have an engineer so you can get away with a little bit less. And if you have the medical module, like maybe they don't count the crew modules in that regard. So, but if you have the medical module, yeah, you're going to need people to man those. So you're probably looking at least uh, three people to man the medical module and maybe even the fourth one. So you have one person assigned to each of the style of beds and then you would have somebody that's there like maybe to transport people around or to receive them and things like um, those kind of roles. So you're going to need some crew to use that medical module. Cargo module, of course, like I said, you don't really need much of anything. Refinery module, you probably need one or two people to run that, uh, or to make it efficient, like one that really runs the refiners and one that's just moving the cargo around. But the nice thing is, if you're running the refinery module, you're stationary, you're not in combat, so you just need somebody on the bridge, and then you can maybe have all three of the rest of the people man the refinery module. So I think you could run it with as minimum as uh, four crew, most likely. Uh, six crew would then be the max. And if you're going to be running the medical uh, hospital module, yeah, you kind of be probably want some extra people just to man that and also still have availability for people to jump on a gun. But that's a choice you'll make at that point. Size-wise, it fits in, uh, I think, roughly between a Crusader Hercules and a probably like a Polaris, like the Corvette style ships. It just fits in right in between there or the Carrack. So it's a fairly sizable ship. It's larger than a, than the Crusader series, of course. 
a lot of the profile is of course made up because of the design so it, it there is some wasted uh, volume in there for sure power plant i'm really happy to see two size three power plants so it, it has of course a lot of power capacity i think the main reason you see two size three power plants is because of that modularity like a cargo module is not going to need a whole lot of power but the refinery module probably will be consuming a lot of it and later on if we see different sorts of um, modules in there you have the means to power them which is really important and of course it gives you that redundancy and of course being nice size 3 components is a really good uh, middle ground to sit at size 3 quantum drive jump drive yeah you got your uh, main thrusters and all of that stuff size 3 quantum fuel tank so it doesn't have the same sort of range of course as a dedicated explorer like a carrot but it will have plenty enough range it has a lot of um, just normal uh, hydrogen fuel so that's actually quite nice to see not entirely sure why it needs that much of it but time will tell it does will probably mean you can just stay on station much longer and i wonder if at some point we will see that that fuel also gets consumed by power plants because right now it isn't so if you don't fly around you don't consume any fuel which means that your power plants just create energy out of thin air and it would not surprise me if that would change at some point so if that's going to be the case, then having additional fuel is going to be really useful. Uh, single size 3 shield. Not amazing, certainly not terrible. Ideally, of course, you want to see double up in shieldings because it just means a lot of redundancy and quite a bit of uh, survivability. Uh, big coolers, again, probably also to help out with the modules, depending on what you're running with. Well, your gravity fuel intakes, all of that stuff is relatively... Uh, who cares, to be honest, right now? We don't know much. Set. Okay, so the turrets are remote, so probably on the bridge then we saw a total of four stations. So that's going to be um, Captain Pilot, and then three people who can switch between engineering and probably also re operating the remote turrets. So that is good to know. And uh, remote turret, also of course, they are a little bit less functional than a fully manned turret in regards to how they operate, but they're still going to be really good. It has some missiles. I mean, honestly, you might as well not have missiles, like eight uh, size two missiles. That is nothing for a ship this size. So that seems just literally like somebody at an afterthought was like, hmm, should we put some missiles on it? And somebody's like, ah, do you have some space somewhere? He's like, yeah, I think I can squeeze something in there. It's like, okay, fine, squeeze them in there. It's pointless. <laughs> Leave the eight size two missiles. It's not going to, it's not going to make a difference in any combat encounter, really. And then of course we have the modular center section of the ship. Now here we have a bit of the cutout of course and we can see, we we'll have to see how this int entire interior of course is gonna be working out. Uh, but then here is your flexible area so to speak. So this is the module that you drop in and out. Here you have that, that hangar bay that we saw before alongside with some cargo capacity. Not sure if it's going to be fully either or, or maybe a combination thereof. And we have, of course, the medical uh, med bay cargo refining the modules here. I'm really curious to see what sort of other modules they will start to release at some point. Let's take a look at the gallery. So here we have what well, appears to be the captain's uh, office, ready room. So it's from behind there. I think that is the bridge as well. Interesting layout, because you wonder then where you approach it from. Well, it looks really nice. Their personal, uh, looks like the bathroom there, so I guess then their bedroom is somewhere behind here. And then the crew probably will go into bunks, as usual. This appears to be the crew rest and, yeah, R&R area. Only four seats at a table. I think they need to expand that to six. If you're gonna run a six-man crew, you wanna be able to have everybody uh, gathered around for dinner. Well, that may just be a concept thing that they changed later on, so. I assume they will have enough seating for six people. Pool table, you wanna have some fun in that regard. Uh, I hope we can, uh, that these tables are gonna be like more multifunctional. Like, one of the things I would love to see is some air hockey. Because I think that would be really cool. So here we see the refinery module in action. So we can see that it literally just tractors up the backs from the, oh, diamond. 
I'm blanking on the bloody name. God, that is that is disgusting. That's really bad of me. Yeah, just taking up the mining bags, uh, attaching them, and then emptying them. I'm not sure if it returns them back in because I believe the idea was that this has spare bags, or maybe the mole it was that had spare bags. But either way, it can probably empty them very quickly. So you just sit here for a moment, it empties your bags, and then it, you put them back in, and off you go again and mine. So that's a really interesting solution in that regard. I think the most uh, most useful, you're gonna find this in smaller to upwards of maybe a medium level organization. The refinery interior space, of course, we already looked at that one. Here we have that hangar bay, you can see the Pisces. Yeah. A bit hard to see how far, of course, it is out, but I think it's really gonna fit just one of them. But it's really, really a lovely little hangar bay in the back here. I'm actually not sure if you can also ramp this down. It doesn't actually, I thought initially that would maybe be the case, but I don't see that as an option right now. That would be cool if this would also be able to have a ramp so that you could use it for either a shuttlecraft or maybe a ground vehicle. You know, options there. Medical bay, I'm not sure, I don't like how this looks here, but I think this is just a lift right now that is moving up with some medical supplies or something. But I think this should be just uh, all level flooring because otherwise you're running around here with patients and then suddenly boop, you go over the edge. I think some people may not be too happy. So parked on the ground here. Looks really, really nice. Okay, here we have a Ursa being loaded in the cargo bay. Yeah, so we don't have a ramp, but you could then potentially load a vehicle up in here and there. What do we have here? Can we take a look at this zooming? No, it doesn't want to zoom this image. Um, of oh, image in your tab. Because I see something here that has me intrigued. Like what is this here? I have not seen you before. It looks like a ammunition carrier of sorts. Look at the shape here, that looks like almost like a torpedo on there. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? A lot of this ground vehicle stuff they have in the concepts we've never seen before, of course, so it could just be all different things of like that. I would not be surprised if quite a few of these things have been developed at some point at least. Interesting. Well yeah, so we have a Again, triangle landing gear. So we have no ramp, vehicles need to go over here. So if we want vehicles in there, we need to keep the center space and cargo in the bay free, which traditionally speaking, of course, it always is. I do wonder actually, how do the modules drop in then? Because do they drop in from the top or from the bottom? Hmm. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, here of course, cargo module, as we said here, they have some loose boxes, but maybe they're attached here, but like, yeah, this concept stuff is not too reliable in that regard. But the main goal is like, as we can see just from the layout and what it does, the main job is going to be moving the main containers around. With the MPUV, of course, in the hangar bay. Some people will be using this, I'll probably go with the Pisces still. Now we head to the uh, command deck. And now we had our action shot, yeah. Here again, you know, quick some of the specs. Yeah, remote dual set five, yeah. Six screw. Here it is parked on the ground again, uh, different angle. I don't wonder, like, the cargo module, like, if I move those containers around with tractor beams, would the lift be gone or would that be maybe change the diet like or can you move it out of the way so you can just drive a truck under there with a car container and can just track through that? There are still questions to be answered in the actual use of course that this thing is going to have and how it's gonna function. Because I also really as I say, I don't see a way how you change that center module at all. Yeah. Uh no idea. And yeah, let's take a look at the pricing for it as well. 
And this is pricing you see here as including 21% VAT. Standard price for the freighter with um, credit, it's 380 for the ship. So 380 is the base price for the ship. And then you get the modules and the modules go from 70 to $90. So I think it was from top of my head. That's excluding tax. When it comes to value wise, like I think the cargo module has the worst value of the three when, when you look at it. But you know, get the modules that would fit what you want to do with it. Now, besides that, like also this paint scheme, some people like it, some people hate it. I kind of like how it looks a bit different than this, but the standard paint is also really amazing. The main question is like, for who is this ship going to be then? Well, I think this is just the, like I said, this is the ultimate multi-role ship that I've seen so far. It is not cheap, but still at 450 for like the cargo version. Because keep in mind, you can always buy the modules in game as well. And you need something to start out with. So if you're going to start out, say you're, you start out playing, you want to play with a couple of friends. You know, and you're looking like, okay, what, what, what do we want to play in? What do we want to play with? And that allows us to play together as a, as a group on a single ship. This ship is going to do it for you. And it's going to offer you a lot of flexible things that you can be doing with it. And then if you decide later on to join an organization, whether it's a small organization, a medium level organization, a large organization, this ship can do a role within that level of organization that is going to be an actual valuable role. So that means you're going to be actually bringing a ship into this organization that is going to be of use to the organization. Like I said, it's not going to be a full on dedicated ship in whatever role it does. But it get close enough to it that it is actually a valuable addition. If you go up to a larger organization and it's like, oh, I've got a constellation. To them, the constellation is, quite frankly, going to be utterly useless. Because it is a multi-role ship that doesn't do anything particularly well. And they're running a large organization, which means they're running people in dedicated ships. So they're running people that do a job in a ship that is designed to do that job. But if you show up with this thing, you can still move around a very healthy amount of cargo. Not a not C2 level, but probably, but you can do more than an M2. Maybe you don't bring a tongue to the field, but you bring a lot of supplies to the field. You have your medical bay in there, so medical, full of medical hospital, because you have all of the beds. So you can support people in that regard, and that's going to be useful for any level organization. For smaller, medium level organizations, that refinery module may become very interesting because it allows them to keep their malls and their prospectors on station much longer. Of course, for a larger organization, they'd probably be numbing up rocks with Orion, so they don't need it anymore. But then again, as I said, you still bring cargo at a good enough capacity and you bring that medical uh, hospital, so you're still being a valuable addition to that. So you can always keep your own ship and keep that flying and play around with it. And I think that is why this ship is such a very, very strong uh, addition to the lineup uh, from our side, but also in the game in general. Like it is the first modular style ship, proper multi role ship that I've seen that I'm like, yeah, this is going to really, really be a good buy for a lot of people. So if you're looking for a ship, for playing around with yourself and a couple of friends, this will do it. If you're looking for ships that are going to be useful in organizational perspective, this ship will do it. So yeah, to me, I really like the RSI Galaxy. I think it's a well thought out ship. But only thing that we don't see is like how we're going to change the modules around, but I'm sure they'll figure that out at some point. It is just a concept, but it's a really well thought out concept. And in its current stand, it is going to be useful from playing with four people up to joining the largest of organizations. And that is something that very few ships can do. And that's why it's such a strong ship. And if they're going to release additional modules, it's only going to be bad, come, become better and better and better. So if you're looking for the one larger ship to start your Star Citizen journey with and not have to worry about thinking like, oh, I need to buy different ships, need to get something else to be useful. This is the ship for you. 
I've added one to my fleet. I've got a cargo module and a medical module. I mean, I've got Orion, so I don't really need a refiner. Got the Orions refine themselves. And I think that's saying something because I've got a reasonably large fleet by now. I'm looking, of course, at more industrial support, but also like if I need to support in combat, search and rescue operations, this is just a really flexible ship to just have around. And also if you want to do something on a smaller scale, it would probably do a really good job. And that flexibility seems to be really, really good. So yeah. Honestly, most interesting ship in a very long time and a really, really easy recommendation for a ship to acquire. I do think um, price-wise we will see a quite some increase in this by the time it becomes flight ready. So right now, as you said, we're looking at 450 for the cargo version. I mean, I would not be surprised if we see it go up to a, this is for the cargo module, probably 525 to 550. That's why I estimate this thing is going to land up. So that's fairly reasonable price increase. And I think for some of the other modules, it may go up a little bit more just because of the additional value that they have. Yeah really really like this edition and i strongly recommend it to anybody that is looking for a ship of this size um, to play around with because and maybe you don't want to have uh, a lot of ships around maybe you don't want to have a bunch of smaller ships around this is going to do it really well for you and keep in mind the larger the ships are relatively speaking the better value they become so if you are doubting between getting two or three smaller ships versus one of these get yourself an R rsi galaxy you're not going to regret this ship one single bit. Anyhow, that has been me rambling on long enough from this ship. I've well over half hour now. Oh well, it is how I tend to think about things. I like to go through the full process. If you want to go a quick five minute guide, there's surely people out there who will do it for you. But yeah, for me, I like to take a look at it in depth, consider the things that it can do, the problems that it may have, the opportunities that it will present. I think we have gone over there pretty much all of that it has to offer. As I said, it is a really, really strong ship. All that said, thank you very much for sticking around with me and watching this one. And we'll have to see what else I come up with next time. But I think we have some ideas for some uh, fleet compositions and certain ships to buy and depending on what you want to do. So I'll take a look at those later on. Till then, bye bye.